Hi, I'm Neil, and I make videos about sculpting, molding, and casting. If that sounds like something up your alley, please hit that subscribe button to get all the latest content. Today's video is going to detail a very special personal project. I'm a really big fan of the Wings of Fire series, and I decided to sculpt my favorite character, Glory. I also wanted to give cosplay a try. I've had some sitting in my studio for a couple of years now, and I finally dove into it, and I really love it. So come join me in that adventure as we watch the creation of Glory. Beginning the sculpture with an armature, and that's going to help hold up the weight of the clay so it can stand up properly. So I'm just using some 14 gauge aluminum armature wire that I am twisting together. And the twisting helps create stability and it also gives the clay some tooth to grab onto. I'm kind of blasting through this here because I do go over this in other videos and I also have an entire class on this if you're interested in more details about armature creation. But you can get the, a pretty good idea of what I am doing here and using the layout map there on the table for reference for the proportions. I created that by downloading the concept art of Glory and then printing it out at the size that I wanted to make the sculpture and then tracing it onto tracing paper. And here I'm creating the wings with several wires that are bunched together. I'm just creating two of the fingers here. The others will be added later on. Right now I'm just creating the main structure so I can add it on to the main armature. And then adding some foil just to bulk out the chest a little bit before beginning with the clay. So I'm using the cost clay that I got from the Kickstarter when cost clay originally released their clay uh, several years ago so I did have to revitalize it but it ended up still working very well uh, by the way this is not a sponsored video but I will be mentioning cosplay quite a bit throughout this video this is my first sculpture with cosplay and I really loved it definitely gonna be my go-to clay for original pieces so you can see I'm just using little pieces of clay and slowly building up the form. It's still pretty rough and loose and it will be for a while until I get the shapes and proportions looking accurate as I don't want to start on any detail work before the anatomy and all of that good stuff is looking correct. So I generally start with the torso and the tail and the, the neck as you saw and then build the limbs off from there. As I go along, I'll use my wire loop tool to pare down the shape a little bit here and there. Adding some toes on with thin wire. Wanted to get those in place before I finished sculpting down the leg. You'll see a lot of the same processes repeated where I just add clay and pare it down again. I'm now preparing the head for the eyeballs, which I use steel ball bearings for. Just press those into place, making sure they're as even as possible. I'm building up some of the anatomy now, just using strips of clay to give the impression of muscle on the arm, as well as the shoulder blade there. So I'll generally start the figure looking kind of skinny. So I give myself room to build up the anatomy. And now slowly building up the face, the different planes of the face, like the eyelids, using a tool to get everything in place and smooth out. Building up the eye ridge and the cheekbone. Getting in the jawline and then I can finally mark in the mouth. Just 
just slowly adding in details like the nostril. For the horns, I roll out some tapered shapes of clay and roll on some kind of textured divots. And now I am blocking in the scales that are going to be along the underside. So kind of creating the main outline first and then going in and tooling the individual scales. You can see the lines are a little bit rough at first. I'll end up going back and smoothing each one out individually several times. And then marking in some divots for where some of the puffy scales are going to go. The horns have been baked already, so they're hard. And now I can press them into the head and kind of create a little cuticle that will make it look like the horns are actually growing out of the head. So I can just sculpt around that easily since the clay is nice and baked. And I went ahead and sculpted in an ear fin you might have seen there and added some scale texture along the top of the head. There was a lot of work in this figure, so you will see every now and then I come back with something fully sculpted. That's just because there was so much to do that there's no way I could have had it all on camera. So now I'm repeating that ear fin on the other side so you can get an idea of how I created that first one. Again, marking in an area for some more of those scales. And then just doing some test spots for the main body scales, which yes, they took forever, but I really wanted a fully textured look to this piece. So I just took my time and sculpted in all of these little teeny tiny scales. And a lot of them ended up, I had to go over them several times. You may notice here, she's a little bit shiny. That's because I had her in the freezer. When I mixed together this clay originally, I made it a little too soft with some of the clay softeners. I had to keep putting this back in the freezer to solidify the clay a bit so I could actually sculpt in this detail. Here I'm adding in some of those larger scales along the front of the arm and doing some more of the tiny detail scales. I'm using my fine wire loop tool for these scales for the most part. It ended up working really well, kept a nice soft edge around the scales so they didn't look too ragged. And I am doing a lot of smoothing as I go along. It didn't show even half of it. There's just so much smoothing you have to do as you go along. If you haven't used cosplay before, it's very similar to Sculpey in many ways. It also has more of an elasticity to it, I would say. Very similar to Monster Clay. And this is by the creators of Monster Clay, so that makes sense really easy to work with, very forgiving, and of course one of the best parts about it is once you bake it, it remains flexible. All right, so I have already baked her here. The first baking has been done and I'm adding these back plates along her back and the back of her tail. You can see here they are all in place just with little overlapping pieces of clay. And I also went ahead and added in some toes, just a base 
structure for the toes. And I'm going to show you on this side how I created those toes. They're just a very simple tapered shape on each wire that I pinched the end to create a little claw. And these are going to be baked and I'm going to have another layer of clay on top of them. These are just so tiny, it's hard to get in all of that detail. Even with the armature wire, the clay is still squishing around, so it's nice to create that first layer of big detail, and then you can have something solid to sculpt against for the smaller detail. Here I have completed the wing, as well as the second layer of detail on the toes for this side. I've also added in those puffy accent scales. So we're gonna go ahead and see how I did that using the other side. So I am wrapping little strips of clay around each claw to create that cuticle look. I then smooth the clay up the finger and onto the back of the hand, re-sculpting in some of that scale detail. Cosplay adhesive comes in handy when you are applying wet pieces of clay to finished pieces of clay or cured pieces of clay. Really helps it stick into place. I use that on the wings and on those little accent scales. It cures once it gets baked along with the rest of the clay. It really makes a huge difference. I was skeptical at first, but it really helps the clay hold on. So you saw I was just building up the wing arm and now I am adding in those additional wing fingers because I want to have four fingers. So I'm taking some fine wire, wrapping it around the larger fingers and then shooting it off to the side for an extra finger. And then I do that a couple times to create the four fingers. And I have some lost footage here, but I did go ahead and start the clay on the wing fingers and now I'm adding some scales along the backs of the wing arm. Using some adhesive once again to do those little accent scales. Just using a tool to distribute the glue because you only need a little bit of that, I learned. You can uh, end up making the clay a little squishy if you use too much, so definitely got to use it sparingly. Also not seen here, I do a little bit of sanding here and there to smooth out the scales, give them a nice even look. I didn't do too much sanding on this though. It is a little tricky to sand cured cost clay. It's a little rubbery, so there's a lot of drag, but it does sand very nicely. It can just be a little tricky. Do recommend wet sanding with that for sure. And now just finishing off these wing fingers, just pinching on little bits of clay onto the fingers. And then at the end, I've got the little claw and they wrap a little cuticle around. It creates a really nice finished look to that finger. And then doing the same for the remaining fingers. The whole time making sure that the fingers are even with the other side of the wing really wanted to get those symmetrical and you can bend this once it's baked you just have to be really careful if you have a baked piece you bend and then bake it again it can crack i actually had a few repairs i had to make you might have noticed the tail started out straight and then it was curled yeah i got a lot of breaks in there all right, so before I do the wing membranes, I actually want to get a layer of paint on this girl. And that is because I don't want to have to paint the wing fingers around the membranes. That is a nightmare, especially on the underside. You can actually bake clay that's been painted. I've tested it in the past, so I knew it would be fine. So I just wanted to get a base coat on there, and that is just the main color of the overall sculpture. So she's kind of like an emerald teal, just airbrushing on a very quick coat. 
All right, so once this is dried, it's time to get started on this membrane. So I'm gonna be using translucent cost clay. So I'm just going to be chopping some off the block here and using my handy dandy food chopper to integrate some color into it. So I'm just adding in a few drops of alcohol ink using the food chopper to incorporate that. It took a few rounds of adding in more color. I just didn't wanna to go too fast and get, make the color too dark. Eventually got the color perfect. I just uh, mush everything together, flatten it out into sheets and run it through the pasta machine incrementally until I get it to the thickness that I want, which is about setting number five on here. And that is my sheets of clay that I will be using to cut out for the membranes. Kinda looks like cheese. So I just lay the sheets of clay on top of the fingers and I press them down so I can see the impression of each finger and then run my tool along the edge of the finger and I can just cut off the excess and blend the membrane onto the finger, which actually worked really well. I wasn't sure if that was gonna be enough. I originally had purchased that adhesive for this purpose and I ended up not needing it all for this step. It just stuck so well to the fingers. I have a feeling the paint might have helped it stick a little better. Even after it baked, it stuck really, really well. So I am using a relatively dull knife here. It's a dental tool and that helps prevent from cutting into the clay itself as far as the wing finger goes. Just repeating the same process for all of the little sections of wing. I wanted it to leave enough room so that the wing fingers could still be a little bit poseable. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do like a wing that opened fully, which is fine, but you can get some pretty good bend on this, especially if you have an armature underneath. So this top membrane, the final one, ended up being a pain in the butt, getting it to attach to the body. I cut out a lot of footage here, but there was a lot of struggle trying to get this last piece. And you can see here, I end up just cutting away at most of it and leaving it for kind of an additional piece. So I baked that wing and then added another piece on there, which I'll show on the opposite wing here. But first, just adding in a little color on the ear fins to make sure that matches the wing membranes. I'm gonna be using this in the airbrush in a little bit. So I just wanted to test that color. So here I am doing that final membrane on the other side. Kind of had it figured out. Um, it was pretty simple in the end. It just needed that extra support so here I am using that orange color to add a little bit of focus to the feet. She's got some orange feet. And now airbrushing on some red ink for the gradient on the wings. I'm not sure what I would have done differently here. Having the ink on the wings just ended up making a mess. That ink bled into the acrylics, which I had not anticipated. I'm used to acrylic ink and I wasn't even thinking about it. So now I'm getting to the hand painting, starting with the larger colors. So the underside is a lighter green. I'm going ahead and blocking that in. There's so much sculpted detail on this that I knew the paint job was not going to have to be super detailed. If I did that, this sculpture would look way too busy. I 
I loved adding in these yellow details. She has such a great design and it was really fun mixing that with my visualized representation of her. You know, the concept art kind of has the dragons looking a bit more lizard-like. I have a lot more mammalian characteristics to my dragons and my creatures in general. And I brought that into this piece here. And adding in those back scales, ended up changing the color on those a couple times. Once I started adding in the blue is when she really started to look like glory to me. And I am using so flat acrylics that are made by Golden beautiful bright pigments and dry to a really nice matte finish. Some of these colors were really tricky to mix, this blue in particular. Even though I had the reference sheet printed out and I was matching colors to it, even though the color looks right on the palette, once you put it on the figure, it will look totally different. So the first version of this blue I had was way too light, and I ended up having to repaint some stuff, but it was worth it. I love how the blue scales pop on the orange. That might be my favorite part. Going in and adding just a few shadows in the recesses of the scales and I also did a couple washes of an emerald green to kind of change the tint of the sculpture. She was looking a little too pastel. And at some point I also painted the horns and claws. And now I'm starting to add the final details, which is going to be the Pearl X or mica powders that I just rub on with my finger. At first I just thought I was going to do the belly scales. I ended up doing an assortment of colors over the whole body and that's exactly what she needed to finish her up. So I'm just adding in the eyeballs here, painting in those tiny pupils, and then adding in that final little shine. Final, final detail is just glossing the eyes and adding a little bit of gloss to the nails and the claws on the wings. And we have our finished girl. Oh my gosh, this makes it look like I finished this in no time, but this was a huge project. I started this at the end of January and it is now mid-March, so it was quite an undertaking but I'm so happy with how she turned out, all the little details, and this was just such a great experiment with cosplay. I'm really impressed with its versatility and just its forgiving nature. Everything I wanted to do just worked perfectly, especially those wing membranes. Dream come true. So I hope you enjoyed watching the creation of Glory. If you got anything out of this video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, share, whatever you can do to help the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.